Make sure to watch through to the end to see exactly how much this repair could cost you. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're tackling a topic that's been causing a lot of stress for owners of some of the most reliable cars on the road. You're driving along, enjoying your day, when suddenly a message flashes across your dashboard. Engine maintenance required. Visit your dealer. It's a heart-sinking moment for any car owner, especially when you've put your trust in a Toyota. If you own a Toyota from model years 2018 to 2021, specifically a Camry, Ray V4, Corolla, Highlander, or Avalon, including the hybrid versions, then this video is for you. Before you start imagining catastrophic engine failure or brace for a massive repair bill, take a deep breath and stick with me. We're going to break down exactly what this warning means, why it's happening, the other symptoms you might notice, and most importantly, how you can likely get it fixed for free. And if you're not covered, I'll tell you exactly how much it might cost. Let's get into it. So, what's actually going on under the hood? This isn't some random glitch. Toyota is well aware of this issue. They've released a technical service bulletin, or TSB, with the reference number TSB011224. Now, it's crucial to understand that a TSB is not a safety recall. A recall is issued for a widespread safety critical defect, and the manufacturer is required to notify all owners to bring their cars in for a mandatory fix. A TSB, on the other hand, is more like an internal memo from Toyota to its dealership technicians. It says, Hey, we've identified a common problem with a specific part. If a customer comes in complaining about these exact symptoms, here's the confirmed diagnosis and the official repair procedure. It's a guide to fix a known issue efficiently, but it's reactive. It only gets triggered when you report the problem. The TSB points to a single culprit, a part called the coolant bypass valve, sometimes referred to as the flow shutoff valve. So what does this little valve do? It's a key component in your engine's modern thermal management system. Its main job is to help your engine warm up as quickly as possible after a cold start. It does this by temporarily blocking the flow of coolant to the main radiator, keeping the heat concentrated in the engine block. A faster warm-up means better fuel efficiency, lower emissions, and quicker cabin heat for you on a cold morning. Once the engine reaches its optimal operating temperature, the valve opens and the cooling system functions normally. The problem is that this electronically controlled valve can fail. It can get stuck open or stuck closed, or the sensor that reports its position can malfunction. When the car's computer, the ECU, sends a command to the valve and doesn't get the expected response, it triggers that engine maintenance required warning to let you know something is wrong with the system. This issue specifically affects vehicles equipped with Toyota's dynamic force engines, namely the A25 AFKS, the A25 AFXS found in hybrids, and the M20 AFKS engine. That's why we see it across that range of popular models like the Camry, Ray V4, and Corolla. Besides the dashboard warning, there are other symptoms you might notice. If the valve is stuck open, your engine will take much longer than usual to warm up. You might see the temperature gauge stay on the low end for an extended period. A more obvious sign is that your cabin heater might take forever to blow hot air, or it might only blow lukewarm air. You may also notice a slight dip in your fuel economy since the engine is running inefficiently cool for longer. Now, you might be tempted to just ignore the light, especially if the car seems to be driving fine. I strongly advise against that. While it's unlikely to leave you stranded tomorrow, ignoring it can lead to long-term problems. An engine that consistently runs too cool can suffer from increased internal wear, carbon buildup on valves and pistons, and can even damage your expensive catalytic converter over time. It's a problem that's best addressed promptly. The most definitive way to confirm this issue is by scanning the vehicle's computer for diagnostic trouble codes, or DTCs. The TSB specifically calls out two codes, P268111, which translates to Engine Coolant Bypass Valve A Control Circuit Short to Ground, and P268115, which means Engine Coolant Bypass Valve A Control Circuit Short to Battery or Open. If you or your mechanic find either of these codes stored in the system, that's your smoking gun. It points directly to the faulty valve. So, what's the fix? According to Toyota's TSB, the procedure is to replace the entire water bypass hose assembly. 
This part isn't just a simple hose. It has the problematic electronic valve integrated directly into it. They replace the whole unit to ensure a reliable, long-lasting repair. After the new part is installed, the technician will then need to refill the cooling system with fresh Toyota Super Long Life coolant and properly bleed the system to remove any trapped air pockets, which is critical for proper cooling performance. Okay, now for the part you've been waiting for, the cost. And here's the fantastic news. To address this, Toyota has launched a Customer Support Program, or CSP, with the code 24TE04. This program provides two layers of coverage. The primary coverage is exceptional. Toyota will cover the cost of this specific repair, including parts and labor, regardless of your vehicle's mileage, all the way through November 30th, 2025. That means for most people experiencing this issue now, the fix should be completely free. But what if the problem happens after that date? That's where the secondary coverage comes in. It extends the warranty on this specific part to 10 years from the vehicle's date of first use, or up to 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. This is a fantastic safety net for owners of these vehicles. To take advantage of this, you must have your vehicle identification number, or VIN, handy when you call the dealer. When you speak to the service advisor, be sure to reference Customer Support Program 24TE04. This is the magic number that tells them to check your car's eligibility for the free repair. And this isn't just theory. Owners on popular forums like RAV4 World and Toyota Nation are widely reporting success. We've seen countless posts from people who were initially worried, but after mentioning the CSP, their dealers confirmed the coverage and performed the repair at no charge. But here's the catch we mentioned earlier. Because it's a support program and not a recall, you have to be proactive. You must report the symptom and specifically ask about the program. Don't assume the dealer will automatically apply it. And what if you're watching this video after you've already paid out of pocket for this exact repair? You might be in luck. The CSP includes provisions for reimbursement. You'll need to submit a claim with your original repair invoice. And if your car was eligible for coverage at the time of the repair, Toyota may send you a check. So what happens in the worst case scenario? What if your car is outside both the primary and secondary coverage periods? Based on reports from owners who've paid for the fix, you can expect a dealership to quote between $600 and $900. The part itself, often listed as part number 16,260F0010, typically costs between $200 and $300. The rest of that cost is labor for the installation and the coolant service. It's not cheap, but knowing the expected price range prevents any nasty surprises. All right, let's do a quick wrap up with a clear action plan. If you see that maintenance message or notice the symptoms we discussed, don't ignore it. Step one, call your Toyota dealer. Step two, have your VIN ready and tell them you're experiencing symptoms related to TSB TSB 011224 and would like to check your eligibility under customer support program 24 TE04. Step three, let them diagnose the vehicle to confirm the issue and see if you're covered. And finally, always keep all your service records and paperwork. It's your best tool as a car owner. I really hope this detailed breakdown helps clear things up and saves you some money and stress. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've dealt with this issue, leave a comment below to share your experience with other owners. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more practical car advice that empowers you. Thanks for watching and drive safe.